Hi, I'm Sarah Tilly from Curious Maths. I'm a primary maths consultant based in London and I've been in education for over 20 years. I'm a massive, massive fan of teaching maths through story. And as I've said in my previous videos, I think it's probably my favourite way to teach maths. So I'm really invested in this. I love it. Um, so this is my fourth video in my series on I Love Math Stories. And in this video, I'm going to concentrate on this amazing book. Equal Schmequal. And this is by Virginia Kroll. So in this video, I'm going to give you a synopsis of the story so you can see whether you like it and whether your child at home or your children in your class would enjoy it. And then I'm going to suggest a variety of activities that you could use in the classroom or at home to get the most out of this fantastic maths book. I hope you find it useful. So let's have a look at this lovely book, Equal Schmequal. And even on the front cover, you can spot it says a math adventure. Now, this book is written by Virginia Kroll and it's illustrated by Philomena O'Neill. And I think this book is perfectly suited for a year two classroom. It really matches the national curriculum objectives. Um, but also, I would say that they could be adapted for year one because there's quite a lot of connection making with the learning and also extended to year three. But the activities that I've suggested for this book have been concentrating on the year two national curriculum for maths in England. Right, so let's have a lovely little look at this book. So it's called Equal Shem Equal. So there's a massive focus on understanding what the equal sign is or what equal means. And that's the main math theme running through the book. However, it's really cleverly written and there's so many different directions that you could go into after you've done this book. And I've suggested some of those in my video too. So let's have a look at the story. So it's beautifully illustrated, as you can see, and it's a story about a mouse who can and a bear who um, see some children having some fun and playing a game of tug of war. And they decide for themselves, right, we want to have a game. And mouse is really keen and says, let's have a go. And of course, the bear beats mouse. And mouse says, no fair. I forgot the teams have to be equal. And slowly but surely, other animals come out and want to get involved. They want to play the game too. And mouse says, yes, you can all play, but only if the teams are equal. So they talk about what equal means. And then they think about different ways to do the tug of war. So they thought, what about meat eaters versus plant eaters? And they talk about things like that. And they try their ideas out and it doesn't work because the teams are not equal. And animals continue to join. And this time they think, what about putting three animals on each side? Would that to make it equal? But no, it doesn't. So some of the animals start to get a bit cross because they don't think it's fair. But Mouse has a little think and suggested, well, why don't we think about our teams having equal weights? And we could use the seesaw to help us do it. So that's what they do. They investigate lots of different ways to sit on the seesaw to make it equal. And once they have that equal team, they will then have that game of tug of war. And it's a really nice investigative book. There's so much maths that you can pull out of it. So they finally solve the problem and manage to get the seesaw perfectly balanced. And then they go off to have their game of tug of war. And the inevitable happens because they are equal teams. The rope doesn't move and it seems like no one can win. But all the way running through the story, Bear is always looking for food and something to eat. And once again, Bear gets distracted and notices some bee and bees and thinks there's going to be some honey. Let's go off the rope and the team win. So it's a lovely story about the importance of equality um, to make things fair. And this can really be picked up with so many maths ideas. Here are the national curriculum objectives for maths in England. And the activities that I've designed for this book focus around year two, particularly with solving problems with addition, using concrete objects and pictorial representations, and also thinking about problems with measure. 
They also link to Year 1 objectives, as you can see on the screen, and the overarching theme of this book is understanding the equal signs, so it's suitable for any year group that needs some consolidation on what that actually means. On top of that, there's loads of opportunities for communicating mathematically, predicting, refining, trial and error. There's loads of maths you can do. Next, I'm going to share with you lots of ideas of how you could use this fantastic book at home or in school. The slides coming up have got lots of detail and I give guidance on what pages to read to, etc. But I'm going to just talk over and do a little bit of a summary and then you may like to pause the video to actually look in a bit more detail about the ideas. Session one. So the main activity in session one is giving children an opportunity to sort and classify each of the animals. And we're going to use the idea from pages 10 and 11 um, of categorising them under plant eaters and meat eaters. And on the next slide, I've suggested some different ones you can do. So this session is about getting to know the book, um, picking out some of the key words, asking some key questions. All my ideas are provided on the screen. And here are the suggestions of different ways that children could sort and classify under different headings. And I recommend that you give children pictures to sort and classify with in pairs on the table. And if you've got a smart board and you can put the pictures on there, they can be dragging them over when you share the ideas at the end of the session. The main activity in session two is ordering the animals in terms of mass and also thinking about the seesaw idea and children getting an opportunity to put one animal on each side and understanding how a seesaw and a balance works. Here's some guidance on how you get to that point. For this part of the lesson, you need to introduce a pan balance. And for this lesson, just you modelling with it will be absolutely fine. And the next day, in the next session, the children can use the balance themselves. So we're working on language, um, comparative language, and understanding how a seesaw works. And then there's some ideas of activities that the children can do. The main idea for session three is for children to be able to attach some mass to the animals so they can really get an accurate idea of which animal is heavier and how to balance them. So in this session, I recommend using something like Numicon or you could use cubes and giving a value to each of the animals. And there's some guidance on the screen about how I would do that. So the main activity is that children will blue tack pictures of the animals onto the Numicon pieces or their stacks of cubes. And they're going to use a balance to actually put the animals on each side of the seesaw and to see if any of them are equal teams. And you've got some guidance on the screen about which pages to read and then give children different scenarios to follow and see if they can predict the outcome and then actually use the concrete materials to prove. And all of this is about working out whether the teams are equal. Session four builds really well on session three, but this time with a bit more independence. So they're doing the same idea, try, but this time they're trying to find the actual answer in the book. So you're not giving them the guidance on which ones to investigate. In this session, I'd introduce the not equal sign for a bit of fun. And children could start recording their answers with numerical values, putting that equal sign or not equal sign in the middle. And there's some guidance on the screen. Finish off the session by reading the end of the book and what a lovely book it has been. 
So you finish the book, but the maths doesn't have to stop. This book is fantastic. You can keep going with it. You can definitely extend it to a two week period and bring in some other maths concepts. So there's links to fractions in the book, which you could explore a bit further. And of course, because we're talking about equal groups um, in mass in this story, but actually we could easily lift that idea and look at equal groups with number and do some work on a division linked to this book. So those are my maths ideas for the book Equal Schmequal. I hope you find it useful. Please like my video and check out my others in the collection and head over to my Facebook page, Curious Maths, for more fun maths ideas. Thanks very much for watching.